Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look and analyzing what exactly happened to Tua Tagovailoa during the Dolphins versus Bengals game of week four. Before I dive deep into this video, I just want to emphasize that everything I say is based off my opinion and my knowledge as an athletic trainer. I'm not making any formal diagnosis. I am not making any conclusive statements based on Tua's treatment or whatever the Miami Dolphins are doing. I am just making a video and analyzing what is going on. But anyways, guys, let's dive deep into this. To properly understand the injury, the situation, and the controversy surrounding it, we first have to analyze the game where the Dolphins played the Bills in week three. In that Dolphins versus Bills game, we see Tua getting tackled pretty hard. So right around here, I'm playing it in slow motion. He throws the ball, he gets tackled. He lands on, let's see, outstretched arm. His butt makes contact with the ground, but then, and this is where it gets interesting, as you can see, he kind of bangs his head pretty hard on the, on the turf or on the grass, but it's still a pretty hard bang. And you can just see his head go back up and he keeps going back and he just stays like that for a couple of seconds. His hands go over his helmet and everything. And this right here is what people are talking about. He kind of struggles to get up kind of shakes a little bit, keeps walking, keeps walking. And then right here, he just like stumbles, kind of looks disoriented. He gets right back up. And then you can see that it's that bad that his teammates even come to support him. We have somebody from the medical staff um, going to see what's wrong with him, kind of give him a short eval, a quick eval, I should say. They're seeing what's wrong with him. Eventually he does get taken to eventually he does get taken to the locker room for further evaluation. The NFL does have a game day protocol for concussions, but keep in mind that just because you follow a protocol, it doesn't mean that you can rule out a concussion. What gets interesting about the NFL protocol specifically is that they have certain symptoms that are no go. So if they are seen in the player, the player can't return to play. And one of the main ones which can be seen by Tua is gross motor instability. We could see that with his stumbling, you know, he has like trouble walking. The gray area here though is that it is subjective, meaning that the gross motor instability is determined by the team physician and the unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant. Now, in terms of the eval that happened in the locker room, I wasn't there, but there's just so many different things that could have happened which allowed Tua to go back into play. Tua might have really wanted to play and he just did a really good job of hiding his symptoms during the eval, that way he could go back to the field. Or the physician might have had some pressure on him and didn't want to sit out Tua for the rest of the game. Now, like I said, I wasn't there. I'm not gonna make a conclusive statement on anybody's behalf, but they let him back to play and what was interesting is that at the end of the game, they actually said he suffered a back injury, so they completely ignored the head trauma aspect of it. A lot of people were really questioning the Dolphins' decision to let Tua play and then saying that he had a back injury. Dr. Bennett O'Malley, who is known for his studies on CTE, said that Tua should have not been allowed back in the game. On top of that, the NFL Players Association is also looking into the case to see if Tua really should have been allowed back in the game. Was it the right call? But now, let's fast forward a couple days later to the Dolphins versus Bengals game. Even before the game started, Tua's start was pretty quick questionable, but he started anyways. And during the game, this happened, and this is the play that everybody is talking about. Rolling left with the brain, and down he goes. Slung down in his own 48-yard line. Josh Tupu. And, uh-oh. But right here is where he starts getting down, and right there, his positioning in the neck right there, there might be some slight hyperextension, which is pretty much called whiplash, you know, in basic terms. Um, it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but his neck is definitely gonna suffer something when he hits the ground. So right about here is his first point of contact. He hits his elbow first, his left elbow. He goes immediately down, hits his head pretty hard. You can see it kind of bounces off a little and he stays down and his arms immediately start going towards him. You guys can see he starts doing this reaction or this response, I should call it. It's called a fencing mechanism. 
right there. Now let's take a look at what Tua does right here. So this is known as the fencing response position and it's pretty much indicative of a TBI or a traumatic brain injury. So whenever an athlete or just anybody does this, it's not good. Like this is a red flag, this is dangerous. Like this is when this is when everybody starts running on the field, EMS gets activated. Obviously there's a lot of support. Like I said, this is a major injury. It's a very scary scene. Um, I can't imagine what it's like to see that like in front of you in person. But yeah, he gets carried out on the stretcher. They obviously have to stabilize his neck. And yeah, he's carried out. Now, minutes later, the Dolphins did tweet that he was moving and that he was conscious and that he did suffer a head and neck injury and that he was on the way to the hospital. As this happened, a lot of people were furious with the way the Dolphins medical staff handled to a situation. It looks like he does get a concussion the first game versus the Bills, but the Dolphins covered up saying that it's a back injury. And then when he plays again against the Bengals, he does get a concussion. And it is really obvious just because of the mechanism and the fencing positioning he does. And the truth is, yes, you might not hear it a lot in sports or see it on ESPN or on SportsCenter, but back-to-back -back concussions can kill you. There's a lot of speculation, debate, and controversy to Tua's situation and how the Dolphins handled it. Now, my personal opinion is that the NFL does have a massive issue when it comes to concussions. Concussions can be really serious, and the safest and most conservative approach is to treat them carefully. However, we can see that the NFL doesn't always do that. But guys, I want to hear what you have to say. What do you think about the situation? Should Tua have been allowed to go back into the game versus the Bills? Should have he been allowed to play versus the Bengals? Leave your opinions down below in the comment section. But guys, that is pretty much it for this video and this injury analysis. It's the first time I ever do one of these. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. That is it for me, but always remember, to stay hydrated.